Queen Elizabeth may be one of the most famous people on the planet, but that doesn't mean she can do anything she likes. In fact, her lofty position means there's a lot she can't get away with. Here are the things Queen Elizabeth has never been allowed to do. In the UK, all citizens have the right to express their political opinions, or almost all of them at least. As it turns out, Queen Elizabeth is expected to remain strictly neutral with respect to political matters. This also means that she can't vote or stand for election. Usually, the Queen does a pretty good job of keeping her political views private, but just because she's not allowed to voice them publicly doesn't mean she doesn't have them, and she has actually broken this rule on a few rare occasions. For instance, back in 1976, she let slip her opinions on American independence, allegedly saying, "...we lost the American colonies because we lacked the statesmanship to know the right time and the manner of yielding what is impossible to keep." In another instance, the Queen made a thinly veiled political comment about an impending referendum on Scottish independence, saying, "...well, I hope people will think very carefully about the future." Most recently, however, she attempted to encourage potential doubters into taking a vaccination for COVID-19. Having recently taken the vaccine herself, the Queen said, "...it is obviously difficult for people to, if they've never had a vaccine, because they ought to think about other people rather than themselves. It may seem strange, but members of the royal family, including Queen Elizabeth, aren't allowed to be touched by the so-called common folk. Indeed, physical contact is one of the great taboos surrounding the British monarch, and initiating it with one of them is generally seen as a huge faux pas. Still, this rule doesn't mean that Queen Elizabeth has literally never touched anyone from outside of her family. Sometimes she has even welcomed contact with other people in public. For instance, she was once caught on camera with her arm around Michelle Obama. Obama later recalled the moment in her memoir, Becoming, writing that she never realized the touch would be such a big deal. She said, "...what is true among world leaders is that there are people who handle protocol, and usually the people they're representing don't want all that protocol. So you wonder, well, who are you doing this for? Because they don't want it, we don't want it, but it's just the way things are." For people, dinner parties are a chance to sit back, catch up with friends, and enjoy a little good food. For Queen Elizabeth, however, dinner parties have never been that relaxed. She's certainly never had the freedom to choose her conversation partner at formal dinners. The rule is that Queen Elizabeth begins dinner speaking to the person on her right and then switches to the person on her left. This is a pretty strict rule, too, as Formula One star Lewis Hamilton once discovered the hard way during a dinner at the palace. So I sat down and she was to my right, and I started to talk to her, and she was like, um, <laughs> she was like, no, you, you, you speak that way first, and I'll speak this way, and I'll come back to you. <laughs> There's no doubt about it, Queen Elizabeth is about as much a celebrity as you can possibly get. Unlike other celebrities, however, the Queen has never been allowed to sign her autograph. In fact, the entire royal family is banned from signing their names for fans in case their signature is forged later on. Now, there have been a few rare instances in which other royals have broken this rule, but don't expect to see that kind of rebellion from the Queen anytime soon. By the sound of things, Queen Elizabeth rarely signs her own name, period. In 2020, an old 1954 Christmas card from the Queen and her her husband, Prince Philip, was sold at a staggering 4,500 pounds, simply because Queen Elizabeth's signature is so rarely seen. The joy of choosing a baby name is one of the most fun parts about bringing a child into the world. Sadly, Queen Elizabeth has never had the freedom to name her children like most people have. The Queen is mother to four children, Charles, Anne, Andrew, and Edward, and while she probably had some say in her children's names, there are a number of traditions and restrictions that likely guided her decisions. Indeed, royal baby names are a pretty serious business. They have to both acknowledge history by paying respects to relatives, while also being fashionable. The complexities of naming a royal baby don't stop with the first name either, as most royal tots end up with a number of middle names, each paying homage to various relatives. For instance, Prince Charles's full name is Charles Philip Arthur George, Prince Edward's full name is Edward Antony Richard Louis, and Princess Anne's full name is Anne Elizabeth Alice Louise. Talk about a mouthful. Unfortunately for Queen Elizabeth, public displays of affection are strictly off-limits for royals, largely as a matter of custom. It is, however, a largely unspoken rule. As royal etiquette expert Micah Meyer told People magazine, "...senior members of the royal family would likely not be told how to interact or when they can or cannot show PDA, and would be trusted to use their better judgment as to when it's appropriate." This unspoken no-PDA rule is generally thought to be linked to the fact that the royals are often out in public in an official capacity. And 
and hugs and kisses would simply be inappropriate. Naturally, couples like Meghan Markle and Prince Harry or Kate Middleton and Prince William have broken the rules a few times, but what about Queen Elizabeth? Would she ever be caught sharing a moment of affection with her husband, Prince Philip? Well, way back in 1953, Philip kissed the Queen during her coronation, and in 1991, he kissed her on the cheek during the New Year celebrations. But aside from those few instances, the Queen has tended to keep her romantic life decidedly private. One of the strictest royal rules the family has to follow has to do with how women are allowed to sit, specifically that they're not allowed to cross their legs. Royal etiquette expert Micah Meyer, who covered classic royal positions in her book Modern Etiquette Made Easy, explains that she calls the common female sitting position in the royal family the duchess slant. The sitting position involves keeping the knees firmly together while tilting the legs to the side. Indeed, it's hard to imagine seeing Queen Elizabeth with her legs crossed these days. As she said on the ITV documentary Queen of the world, sitting cross-legged is actually quite painful. I mean, the only thing I found difficult was sitting cross-legged. For a long period of time, it can be difficult. <laughs> it's quite painful. Still, from the looks of it, she broke the unspoken rule about leg crossing quite a few times in her youth, when she was a little more sprightly. Many people's given names are seldom used in their daily lives, and both nicknames and short-form names have become a staple of modern life, with almost everyone going by a shorter version of their full name. But for members of the royal family, using a nickname isn't really allowed. All royal family members are expected to go by their full names in public, as anything less would be deemed inappropriate. Still, this doesn't mean that Queen Elizabeth and her family don't have private nicknames for each other. For example, Queen Elizabeth was called Lilibet while she was growing up. Additionally, her husband, Prince Philip often calls her Cabbage. And when Prince William was a child, he reportedly called her Gary as he couldn't say Granny. That's quite a nickname for a queen. One of the rules Queen Elizabeth must always follow is to never sit on another monarch's throne. While the opportunity probably doesn't arrive very often, Queen Elizabeth did have to follow the rule on one particular and rather strange occasion. When she visited the set of the HBO series Game of Thrones in 2014, Queen Elizabeth clearly thought better than to sit on the show's Iron Throne. Actress Maisie Williams, who portrayed Arya Stark on the show, spoke about the incident on the YouTube series First We Feast. She said, she didn't necessarily refuse, no one said, sit on that chair because it is going to be funny. We all just sort of smiled and were like, is she going to do it? She sort of looked and said, that doesn't look very comfy. When it comes to food, the royals have to follow a surprising number of rules and regulations. So while you may be tempted to think that eating like a king or queen means eating everything your heart desires, this is far from true. Apparently, Queen Elizabeth and her family are never allowed to eat or drink a wide variety of items, including shellfish, garlic, and even tap water. The ban on shellfish is in place in case of digestive issues that can interfere with public engagements. Foreign tap water is also off the menu for the same reason. Garlic is reportedly off limits too, according to a former palace chef, and you can probably guess why. There are a number of beauty rules the royals are forced to follow, too. After all, there's a reason you never see paparazzi shots of Queen Elizabeth and her family in their sweats and sneakers. First of all, Queen Elizabeth has never been allowed to grow long nails, so long, colorful nails are an absolute no-no in the palace. Additionally, Queen Elizabeth has to be mindful of her hair and makeup, as the royals must always have neat, healthy-looking hair, while makeup should be modest and natural. There is a little wiggle room with these rules, though, and the queen in particular is a big fan of wearing lipstick. She even has her own signature pink color, while all of the other ladies in the court select more muted tones. In fact, her passion for lipstick is such that she even had her own shade commissioned for her coronation. Some of the greatest photographs in royal history have come courtesy of the Queen's occasional sojourns to church or to the races, with her behind the wheel. And while it's certainly not common to see the Queen behind the wheel, she really does love to drive, having learned while serving in the Women's Auxiliary Territorial Service during World War II. Nevertheless, it turns out that the Queen probably doesn't get to drive nearly as often as she'd like to. As Duncan Larkholm, an ex-royal correspondent, told Town & Country, when they're on official royal business, as far as I can remember, they are always driven to and from their appointments. Even when the royals do get to drive by themselves, they're never really alone, Larcom explained. They'll still have their protection officers in tow. They would have had at least two vehicles driving with them and a protection officer in the vehicle with them, all armed. Yikes! As much as she'd probably like to, it doesn't seem like the queen gets to enjoy the open road like the rest of us do. 
It's not just in the car that Queen Elizabeth is surrounded by security guards, though. In fact, the Queen has probably never been out in public without security guards at her side. According to some reports, each member of the royal family has up to five highly trained armed officers to look after them while they're out and about. And when Queen Elizabeth visits her Scottish palace, Balmoral, she's apparently joined by a security team made up of dozens of officers, who reportedly refer to the Queen as S. And all this security isn't for nothing. In 1974, Princess Anne, Queen Elizabeth's daughter, was almost kidnapped, but was saved by her security guard. And when the Queen was visiting Jamaica years later, her guards had to rescue her from an overly adoring crowd. So while this level of constant security may sound a little over the top, based on these incidents in the past, it's probably necessary for the safety of the Queen. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about the latest hot topics are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.